All right, welcome everybody. Um, I'm going to call the meeting to order. This is a hearing of the Committee of Adjustment for the Town of Grimsby. I'd like to first introduce the uh, members of the committee who are all volunteers from the town. Um, first, we have, I'll just ask you to wave so you can identify yourself to the group. So we have Herb Nobes, Danielle Beck, Adam Mottershead, uh, myself, Kevin Antonias, the chair, and Dylan Bailey. And then staff here tonight, we have uh, Nancy Simon, who is our secretary treasurer. And we have uh, Walter Basic, who's uh, representing the planning department tonight. Welcome everybody. So uh, I'll just do a brief uh, note about live streaming. The members of the public are advised that our meetings are streamed live by the town of Grimsby. Individuals and media may be audibly and or visually recorded during this meeting. As a reminder, all electronic devices are to be in silent mode during our committee meeting. So everyone present here will be given an opportunity to comment on the applications being heard. Please address your uh, comments and questions through the chair. Uh, agencies commenting on applications may request certain conditions be imposed. Voicing objections to these conditions will not adversely affect the committee's decision. Does anyone have a pecuniary interest in the matters uh, before us this evening? Good answers, none, and I have no. none as well. Um, we're going to call the applications one by one and we'll allow the um, application to be presented by Nancy. She'll read any correspondence that we've received uh, as well as uh, agency comments. We'll then may give the um, applicant or the owner or the representative an opportunity to explain or elaborate on the application or respond to some of the questions or comments that were raised in the uh, correspondence. And then we'll open it up for questions first from the uh, five committee members and then we'll open it up to anyone else in the audience that uh, may have uh, signed in to the Zoom meeting. Normally there's a, uh, a room here that um, people can attend, but um, so we're gonna first do it in that order. It will call you one by one, but I believe we're now gonna have everybody go to the waiting room until um, your application is heard. So the first application then is A0820, Karen William Powell. So we'll give a few minutes to set everything up for the first application. And before I do that, I was remiss here. I missed one item and that's the minutes of the meeting held on August 25th, 2020. Do I have a motion and a seconder um, that the minutes of the committee adjustment meeting held on August 25th, 2000 or 2020 be approved? Uh, Mover, Herb, seconder, Adam, any further discussion on the minutes? All those in favor say aye or raise your hand. Opposed, if any, was carried. Thanks very much. And now we'll go to the first application. Nancy, I'll just turn myself on mute here. Good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? The first application is to Carnegie A-08-20, uh, submitted by George and Karen Powell at 2 Carnegie Lane. Uh, the application is uh, for a proposed interior side yard of 1.2 meters, whereas 1.5 meters is required, a rear yard of 4.5 meters, whereas nine meters is required, and to allow a secondary suite as an addition to an existing single family dwelling, which will alter the exterior appearance of the dwelling. Whereas the secondary suite is a permitted use provided the exterior appearance is unaltered. Uh, correspondence that was received, um, Public Works Department, no objections. Uh, Region of Niagara, no objections. There was correspondence also received from the neighboring property owner at 28 Elizabeth Street, directly behind 2 Carnegie, requesting a privacy fence uh, due to concerns regarding privacy and overlook of the proposed deck. So this is uh, the exterior appearance of 2 Carnegie as it is today. Next slide. This uh, slide shows the uh, site plan for 2 Carnegie and the proposed one-story addition. 
Um, it also shows uh, two driveways, the existing driveway and the proposed second driveway. Next slide. Uh, this slide shows the elevations. And as you can see on the front elevation, it shows two front doors. And this shows the floor plans. Um, these are pictures that the applicant has submitted of multi-residential dwellings on her street, um, which are currently existing and the front facades of what they look like. Yes, I believe that the applicant wants to speak to these and also uh, she's brought her designer with her this evening, uh, Mr. Venduti. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Venditti. Venditti. <laughs> Close. Did you wish to uh, present something then or further expand on the application? Yes, I do. Uh, if Go I ahead. might. Um, so okay, I'll, what I'm, what I'm, if I may interrupt, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, uh, you can just, if you just let me which slide you want to see, and then uh, then I'll move it to the slide you'd like to see. Um, yes, actually, um, I don't actually need any of the slides, I don't think, but okay. whatever one do you think would be best would be fine. Um, so my name um, is Karen Powell, and I've been joined by this evening by Chris Vendetti, who is my architect for the project. Uh, along with my husband Bill, I'm the applicant um, for the addition to our home at 2 Carnegie Lane in downtown Grimsby. Um, my husband and I are both seniors and uh, we both have some health issues. I'm currently awaiting my fourth joint replacement, which COVID has significantly delayed. Um, this planned addition to our home would provide room uh, for our daughter and her family to join us at our home. They would be able to provide assistance with uh, some of the uh, household tasks, particularly outdoor tasks, including lawn care and snow removal. Their ability to provide assistance would allow my husband and I to remain in our home for a longer period of time and age in place. I've worked in healthcare for 45 years now, I'm just about to retire this year, and in the last 20 years plus in seniors care. So I know how important it is to do pre-planning for seniors. Um, around aging in place because I've helped many families trying to navigate the system, which is not particularly easy. Um, our neighborhood, as you saw by the pictures, is an eclectic mix of single family homes. They're not all on our street. A couple of them are on Adelaide Street, which is behind us. But you can see Carnegie Lofts is um, right at the corner of Carnegie on Ontario Street. The red brick uh, building is uh, number 10 Carnegie Lane, which is a uh, fiveplex um, rental property, it's two doors away from mine. Um, the gray building down in the lower right corner is the rented duplex that sits behind me. And then the other two are on Adelaide, which are both multi um, occupancy buildings. Across from our street from our home is um, uh, railway tracks. So there's no housing, no neighbors across the street that will be affected by the increased elevation at the back of our home. Um, our current property um, does exist uh, with the current uh, single family bungalow and a 1.5 story detached garage. The garage sits about one meter from the property lines on the rear and side setbacks. And our property is slightly irregular in shape, which uh, makes it a little more challenging to try and make the um, um, addition fit exactly for the purpose that it serves. Um, our current bungalow um, sits very low in the ground because it's an older bungalow and to um, accommodate the uh, proper egress and so on, we put in an um, outdoor um, entrance. So the newer uh, addition would sit slightly higher than ours so that the basement would have proper egress windows in it for safety. Our current zoning is downtown transitional TRM. Um, the uh, variance requests have been outlined. So we're requesting uh, 1.2 meter uh, side yard instead of a 1.5, whereas the nine meter rear yard setback, we're requesting 4.5. And then the secondary unit is permitted, but the um, variance request is to alter the exterior appearance slightly of our dwelling. Um, the um, plan um, includes the additional double driveway to include all for um, property for 
off street parking. Um, our one neighbor had the concern about the deck. So uh, Chris is going to speak to that in a moment. We'll eliminate the deck and just put proper um, uh, whatever meets building code. So that'll be Chris's um, area. Um, definitely, this is an important um, project for our family. Um, I'm hoping that um, you know it can be given consideration. Chris, can you speak to what we could do instead of the deck, please? Yeah, we can. Well, first of all, it's a covered deck now, so we could probably uncover it. That that probably would make it not coverage. It would, and then maybe we could reduce the depth of it so that it doesn't fully encroach. Uh, I think it's one and a half meters within the rear setback. I, I'd have to verify, but we could possibly do that as a as a non-building component, be more of an accessory uh, um, extension of the uh, rear, and uh, maybe make it long. Maybe we can make it even longer, or maybe narrower. Uh, so kind of breaking up there a little bit, Chris. Oh, sorry about that. It's okay. Um, so, um, but we certainly will look at the deck as an issue. Um, it's not part of the variance request anyway. Um, the other thing is around the front door. Um, at this time, we have uh, put it as two front doors because it helps to allow for um, emergency egress, but also um, helps uh, give privacy to our neighbors as opposed to a side door, which would go almost directly into their driveway. Any uh, questions for Chris around the design or anything? Or for myself? Do, do, do any of the members uh, of the committee have any questions first for the applicant or their or her representative at this time? I can't see everybody on the screen, unfortunately. I don't have full screen on anymore, so. Kevin, uh, Kevin, can you Sorry, hear me? There. Yeah, now I can. Go ahead, Herb. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I was just wondering, uh, you're going with a, a raised bungalow style for the addition. Uh, why, what is that uh, uh, going to accomplish for you? It provides us the square footage that we require for the project for my daughter and her family to uh, primarily live in that area of the addition. It's a secondary suite that we're attaching into our home. As well, you wanted you wanted to put the egress windows in without having to put window wells in, yeah. which obviously would obvious uh, as well encroach the into the setback. So it was a logical solution, you know, to uh, you know to get as much natural light and to get those egress windows in, so the uh, basement could be occupied. Are there any other questions, Herb, first? No? Anyone else? Any other committee members before we open it up? I don't believe there's anybody else attending, right? Anybody? Did Mr. Globe uh, manage to call in or no? Herb, go ahead. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, have, have the plans been drawn up and ready for uh, application for a building permit? Yes, they have. This is Chris uh, Venditti. Yes, they have yes. Uh, been prepared for a building permit. Okay, would you have any objections uh, putting restrictions on timelines for this uh, project? Um, in, in what sense, Herb? Like a year or two years or something? Uh, in uh, making application and construction uh, starting within a certain time after the permit has been issued. Oops. What's what would be the purpose of that request? Well, that uh, this doesn't sit uh, for years, uh, waiting for the project to be done, which does happen in several uh, instances on other other uh, applications. Um, Herb, I can speak to that a little bit. Um, I have the builder ready to go. It's Dave and M Construction. Uh, we have the money ready to go. Um, we need the variance to complete the application for the building permits. I have um, 
everything in a package ready and draft ready to go. We're anxious to get this project started as soon as possible. I think you're already 60 days behind, right? If I recall. I am, yes. <laughs> Feeling very anxious, actually. All right. Uh, before I open it up, any other comments or questions from the committee? Okay, then I'm going to call for a motion. Do I have a mover and a seconder first? Mr. Mr. Sorry, Mr. Chair, oh, oh, sorry, I didn't see a hand there. Sorry, Adam, go ahead. That's okay. Um, I'm just wondering to the applicant and or planning, if they can just, I'm just trying to follow the logic that went between the, there was a second application that was withdrawn on this uh, proposal to uh, classify it as semi-detached and now it's back to the original application. Just trying to follow the logic that. Okay, I can speak to that, Adam, as well. Um, I really, um, for the semi-detached, because I wasn't going to be um, severing my property, I realized it wasn't um, value added for me to apply for it in that manner. So I withdrew it and put it back to the original application. Um, it, the, with the semi-detached, the uh, costs were uh, much higher and um, I wasn't severing the property. It will always remain one, one home. So um, I withdrew the application and went back with the original, which I think is a good application and I'm hoping can be considered. Okay, thank you. Does that, does that answer your question, Adam? Yeah. Herb, Herb, do you have another one? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, so this is going to be one single uh, residential unit. So is there in the plans connections between the existing house and the addition? No, there will be no connections between the two, but it is one property with an addition on it. Okay, so it is two separate dwelling it units. As a secondary so. unit on, on the original, yes. Okay. But it will never be sold as two separate units. It will be always one property. Does that answer your question, Herb? Yeah. Any, any other questions? Walter, did you want to? No? Um, I just wanted to remind everybody that uh, the existing zoning on the property permits the use. It also permits semi-detached dwellings. Um, the, uh, the, the variance that's being requested is the appearance of the, of the building. So I would say the, the front door facing the street as an example. So that would be the reason for the variance. <clears throat> Excuse me. Otherwise the use is permitted and a semi-detached dwelling is permitted on the property. That's the only reminder I wanted to give everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee members? And again, sorry, I can only see uh, Adam and Herb uh, right now. So Herb, you had a hand up. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, would you have any objections to the uh, condition of obtain, obtaining a building permit within six months and that construction part uh, take place within six months? months? of the issuing of the building permit? Uh, construction start per or be completed within six months? I'm, I'm hoping start, it will be start, with, start within I'm six months. it will be completed within six months of a building permit, but right now um, I know wood, there's wood shortages for a number of-, of Exactly, companies. yeah. So that's what I'm asking. Would okay. you have any objections to that being a condition? those two Good. items that a building pure permit be applied for within six months of the of the uh, variance being granted and yeah. with the building starting within six months after the building permit has been issued okay yeah yeah, yeah I, I would kind of disagree with that kind of a precedent setting thing we've never done that before I mean, a variance runs with the land in perpetuity. That's the that's the reason behind the variance. There's a public process, and once it's approved, and the conditions are met, and there's no appeal, it becomes final and binding and runs with the property. I don't know if we can even set a variance that it would be or a timeline that would be um, revoked. I guess if it was never applied for. So I, I just find that a bit of a dangerous precedent. I don't even know it's, if it's you know illegal to do such a thing, but. Um, 
you know, I think we have to, to uh, recognize that the owner and the representative here are going to act in good faith and proceed ASAP. They've already been delayed 60 days. I don't think we're going to have a problem with them sitting around uh, more than probably 30 days is my guess, right, before they get going, given that winter's coming. So I would object to a time, uh, a time constraint on it. Um, it's just my opinion, but is there any other questions then before we uh, call for the motion? Sorry, Mr. Chair, I had a question. Danielle. Thank you. Um, so I think from the last time we saw this application, my biggest concern was it looking like a duplex or um, a two family home possibly. Um, and thank you, Walter, for clarifying that a duplex or that a semi-detached is permitted here. Um, would you be amenable to then possibly if, if really the variance for the appearance of it is mostly because of that front door would there be an opportunity to possibly move that front door to this well it wouldn't be a front door but move the door to a side or a different facade which would then possibly eliminate the need for that variance and then it would still look more like a single family home I think the um, applicant had, I mean, that she can answer, Karen can answer, but I think she mentioned earlier in her presentation that the reason for the move to the front of the property was to avoid exiting out to um, towards the property on, is it Elizabeth that runs that way? Um, there's, the neighbors, there's a driveway right there, right? Yes, there is a house on, um, the house faces Elizabeth Street, but their driveway is immediately adjacent to our our home and uh, to our driveway. And so it would be almost exiting out towards their property. So that's why we opted to put it out front. It could be moved to the side if necessary. That's all my questions, Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you. And I, and I think the other comment that Walter had answered to, to your point about the semi, the, the use is permitted. Um, the semi-detached use uh, is a permitted use in this area, unlike, let's say, an established, uh, going to call it traditional single-family residential neighborhood. So this is a transitional zone um, close to or part of the downtown. So the use itself is permitted. I think she just the owners have gotten caught up in the, the definitional part of the bylaw that requires it not to change the exterior facade. And, and I think with last time, we have the planning support and the neighbor's support, other than the question or comment about the... Uh, privacy from the deck, which the applicants have uh, agreed to um, alter or remove completely. So uh, I don't really have a concern with this application at all. I think it's a great intensification of a neighborhood in an area that um, um, it kind of fits the neighborhood. It, the the, the semi-detached use is permitted and it's a great intensification and allows for aging in place. I mean, that's, that's exactly what we want to see. So I think it's a great use and a, uh, I uh, wholly support the application before us this evening, but I'll ask uh, one more time for questions and comments and then uh, call Sorry. for a vote. Three, three, Mr. Chair, I just wanted, I just wanted to clarify that um, this isn't a semi-detached because that would require severing the property into two separate lots. Um, not, necessarily. Oh, no, not, nece not necessarily, you can have a semi-detached on one lot. Okay, um, but this is, that's not what is being applied for though. Correct. What is being applied for is for um, an accessory dwelling unit Correct. that is completely self-contained with no internal attachments. Correct. So it's essentially going to function like a semi, but we are right. not approving it as a semi. No. And what is being applied for is a variance, which basically says notwithstanding the external appearance shall not be changed to accommodate an accessory dwelling unit we're changing the external appearance to accommodate an accessory dwelling unit. So I'm just Correct. struggling with it meeting the intent of the zoning bylaw when the use is permitted under a separate classification. I'll ask uh, Walter to, to respond to that. Yes. Um, you know, when, when we're looking at the intent of the zoning bylaw, um, we have to look at the zoning category that's it, that it's in. Uh, secondary suites are permitted in detached dwelling zone categories also, and that particular aspect of the zoning bylaw was primarily intended to um, uh, cover neighborhoods where the uses are predominantly detached dwellings. In this particular neighborhood, um, semi-detached dwelling units are permitted, and as you've seen in the immediate area, there are five plexes, there are apartment buildings, um, 
uh, back-to-back townhouses, duplexes. There's a, a wide variety of different types of uses. So in this particular case, uh, although the literally the bylaw says shall not alter the appearance of the dwelling, this particular zoning category permits semi-detached dwelling. So, um, so it, in, in my opinion, it would be a stretch to say it's not consistent with the intent of the zoning bylaw when the zoning bylaw does permit a semi. So if uh, the form looks like a semi and the zone permits a semi, uh, in my opinion, um, it meets the intent of the zoning bylaw. And if I might, Mr. Chair, um, we would ensure that the current bungalow and the addition were reclad in siding that matches so it would be congruent and look very much like a one family home. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Danielle, does that answer your questions? Yeah, uh, Adam had his hand up, I believe. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, the question I had is actually is regards to the second driveway. Um, I know it's not part of the application um, for a variance, but if I was reading the zoning bylaw correct, that um, where a second driveway is uh, permitted by the road authority, it says the total combined width of all driveway entrances at a street line shall not exceed six meters. And the existing driveway is about 4.4. So I just don't know how that's gonna work. We uh, lost you there, Adam, for the last half of your sentence. Doesn't know how that's gonna work, <laughs> said. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, no, my question is in regards to the, uh, the driveway standards, because with the second driveway, I believe the zoning bylaw says, if you have a second driveway, um, the combined, uh, width cannot exceed six meters and the existing driveway, I think it's about, it's just a little over four, 4.4 4 meters. Walter, did you want to speak to that? Um, in the- um, Yeah, the, the applicant, uh, let me just speak to that first and then, um, uh, Karen, then you can uh, answer it, but I, I need to uh, do the technical answer first, I think. Okay. Um, the, um, the, that's correct. The zoning bylaw does permit a maximum of six meters combined driveway width. Um, the applicant did not apply for that. So uh, a, a, a variance to that particular aspect of the bylaw. So uh, the driveways will need to be altered in, in order to comply with that provision of the zoning bylaw. There you go. Herb? Yep, thanks, Walter Herb. Yeah. Uh, can, oh. can we, uh, can Sorry. we include that variance in this application, make it an addition to this application? That I don't know because it wasn't circulated. So it wasn't applied for or circulated. So probably couldn't, couldn't be kind of tucked into this one or piggybacked onto this one without public notice and so on. But Karen, did you want to speak to that at all or answer that? Uh, Question. We, will, we will ensure that the driveways um, meet the expectation of the bylaw for sure. There are lots of options on our uh, with our existing driveway. We've only sketched it in on the far side as a not um, as a new driveway, but we can certainly just use the current entrance and and create parking on um, part of the lawn there as a driveway. So just make the driveway bigger that's currently there and expand it into the current front. So we will make sure that we meet the bylaw for that. All right, thank you. Anybody else? If not, then do I have a mover and a seconder first? I'll call, I'll read the, uh, the motion. Resolve that submission A0820, George and Karen Powell for minor variance from the provision of the bylaw as amended in a TRM zone to allow for an interior side yard of 1.2 meters, whereas 1.5 is required, and to allow for a rear yard of 4.5, whereas 9 meters is required and to allow a secondary suite as an addition to an existing single family dwelling, which will alter the exterior appearance of the dwelling, whereas a secondary suite is a permitted use provided the exterior appearance is unaltered as per section 419 be approved. And then, uh, so I'll call for a mover first. Anybody just wave your hands. And I think I have all five of you on the screen now. No. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Dylan, moved by Dylan. Uh, seconder to get it on the floor. Herb. 
Mr. Chair, I would second it if that condition were to be put in about the permit and the construction starting. And we, we have done that in the past. And uh, um, I don't see that this would be an issue for this particular application. Um, does any, sorry. Um, the uh, time limit though, what are you suggesting? So I think six months might be a little aggressive if they don't meet the winter building. Yeah. We can make it one year from the time the permit is issued to, okay. because the permit comes null and void if no construction starts within a year anyhow. Right. So, so apply for, the, that. for apply for a permit within a year. Yes, but yes. Any objection to that amendment, Dylan, before I, so the motion would be amended to say that the applicant apply for the building permit within a year of approval. No, if needed, I have no objection. Okay. So I'll, I'll write that in, Herb. So we'll be voting on that amendment. Any further discussion on this motion as amended by Herb with the time constraint? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed if I, I got three eyes. Any opposed if any? Two. So the motion carries. So Karen, it was approved subject to that time limitation, and then there is an appeal period before it becomes final and binding. I believe it's twenty days uh, from the notice. So um, once that's passed and there is no appeals, then it's uh, been approved. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for coming back. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Hi. Thanks, everyone. Hi. So just give us a second here, and then we'll um, do the paperwork and call the next application. Okay. I'm just going to let Jason in. Okay, Walter. Oh, did you? Okay. Okay, so the next application we have is Jason in. Is Jason the one that says Grimsby? Yeah. Oh, he's not in yet? Okay. Okay, so before I call it, then we'll... There he comes. Jason, welcome. All right, so the next application Hi. for us this evening is application A1220, Jason Lachance, uh, 493 Ridge Road. Uh, Nancy, did you want to read the application, pre present the uh, correspondence and so on? Nancy, Nancy, you have to unmute. You have to unmute. Sorry, everyone. So this is uh, application A12-20 uh, submitted by Jason Lachance, 493 Ridge Road West. Uh, it's uh, to allow for maximum lot coverage of 12%, whereas 7.5% is permitted in the specialty crop zone. So there was uh, correspondence submitted um, by planning staff, Bianca Veracci, um, and notification that the property is on the Municipal Heritage Register as a property of cultural or heritage value. Uh, she noted that the construction of the garage addition, in her opinion, will not impact the existing heritage home and that the garage design is sympathetic and compatible with the heritage dwelling. Uh, Councillor Bothwell also commented on the significance of the heritage structure and future consideration for designation. Grimsby Power, no comments. Uh, Regional Niagara Sewer uh, Sewage System Inspector um, 
commented that he visited the site and inspected the existing septic system. He noticed no visual defects. Uh, the proposed garage will be located to the east of the dwelling and there will not be any encroachment onto the existing system. Therefore, he had no objections to the proposed garage. Sorry. So uh, the first slide shows the existing uh, house with the double garage. The next slide is the site plan showing uh, the proposed addition of the garage, which is here. Uh, this is the front elevation of the garage, which will be three car garage. You can see the breezeway that connects it to the existing house. And this is the rear elevation of what it will look like. Is that it then for the presentation? Jason, did you wish to add or um, respond to any of the comments raised? Uh, no, I think Nancy covered all the bases there. That was pretty thorough. Okay. Um, I did have one question. I think it was raised some point. Is it a proposed addition or are you replacing the existing garage with a larger one? Um, it, it is a replacement. It isn't an addition. It, sorry, it is a replacement? It is a replacement, yeah. Um, the existing foundation of the garage is uh, is not good enough, basically. So it will be a, a, a demo um, and rebuild. Although I, I would like to add that that existing garage was not part of the original structure, the heritage structure. It's maybe circa 40s or 50s. Uh, it was built afterwards. Okay. Is there anyone on the committee that would like to ask questions at this time? Again, sorry, I have to apologize. I have to increase. There we go. Now I can see everybody. Any questions from the committee? Adam? Yeah, through the chair, um, I'm just wondering if there's going to be any modifications actually to the, I guess it would be the east wall of the house to accommodate the new garage. Uh, no, not at all. If you, um, whoever is screen sharing there, um, if they could flip back uh, to the 3D rendering, um, as you, as you can see um, uh, on the proposed garage there on the right hand side where it meets the existing dwelling, the roof line is lower. Um, just above that man door. Um, and then if you flip to what I have existing right now, that um, the way that garage meets the house, that's the exact same roof line. So where it actually meets the house itself will be um, no difference uh, to that to that east wall. And Great then nice. it will and then the and then the walls will get higher uh, with, with with the addition and and have that jog in the roof line as you saw in the 3D uh, rendering. Okay, thanks for the answer. Anyone else? Danielle? Okay, thank you through Mr. Chair. Um, so I will be the first one to admit my math skills are not the greatest, um, but I'm just wondering where the 12% comes from. Because when I get the existing plus the proposed, I'm only working out to be about 9%. And that the existing house and the lot coverage is about 7.1. So I'm not too sure where all the additional floor area is or spaces. Can somebody maybe, possibly maybe, provide uh, some calculations Walter, or Walter, did you want to respond? Oh, Jason, sorry, we'll start with oh, Jason. I, I was, I was going to add in there that the initial correspondence that I had, I was not with Nancy, it was with uh, somebody else and they had, um, they had done the, the percentage and I thought I was, I, 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 that was the initial one that Nancy, you were CC'd in and she had mentioned that uh, my allowable was nine point whatever it was and that I was currently basically maxed out and then I believe we redid we redid the math and then I was actually with my existing um, without the proposed addition I was actually 
even over what my allowable was. So I, I should have the numbers um, on me. I, I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but basically I think it was around 10.5% with the proposed. Um, and then, you know, I, I have an acre lot basically. And if I'm maxed out, then in future, if, if I wanted to build, you know, a shed that's more than hundred square feet, um, I, I wouldn't be able to. So basically I, I went back and forth and I said, what is considered minor? Um, and given the amount of money that it costs for the minor variance, I, I figured while I was doing it, I might as well just get a percent or two higher than, um, what I needed just for possible future, um, things that are, you know, in the non foreseeable future, but always a possibility down the road. But I, okay, so I, I really think it was about one or 2% higher than, than what the proposed was. So your Thanks. math wasn't off, Danielle. Fantastic. I'm glad that my calculator still works. Um, and then I guess maybe just sorry through the chair to Walter. Our, um, is the accessory building or shed in the rear yard, is that included for lot coverage out in this area? Yes, it is. Uh, it's all buildings on the property and there is a separate uh, calculation for accessory buildings. Um, but uh, the overall coverage is the number that we're dealing with. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the clarification. Those are all my questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any other questions from the committee members? Sorry, I can't see her, so there is. Nobody else? Now, I understand there was correspondence somewhere from um, the health inspector. So this addition does not affect your existing septic system or tile bed or anything like that. I'm assuming it's well removed from uh, the location of the construction, Jason? That's right, that's right, yeah. And no fixtures are being added to this, it's just a garage. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Um, any other questions before I call for a motion? So again, I'll read the applicant or the motion first, resolve that submission A1220 uh, for a minor variance from the provision of bylaw 1445 is amended, specially crop SC zone to allow for the lot coverage of 12%, whereas 7.5% is permitted. Do I have a mover and a seconder? And sorry, I am out of the Zoom right now. It disappeared on me. So I can't see anybody's. There we are. Sorry about that. Um, mover on this. Danielle, seconder. Herb, any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye or raise their hand. Any opposed? It was carried. So again, it was approved subject to the 20 day appeal period before it becomes final and binding. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. And give us a second here before we transition to the next one. Um, can I can I just ask a quick question regarding the heritage? Uh, I don't sure. I don't know if anybody's knowledgeable about it. Perhaps uh, Walter can answer. Um, give us a shot here. I, I I just got the the only the first time heritage was mentioned uh, in the correspondence was today um, uh, in two emails, and I found they were contradictory to each other because in the one it. it the way I read it said that I wasn't considered heritage and that it was to be, you know, proposed in the future to be heritage. And then they also submitted a letter saying that they didn't oppose to it. Uh, there being anything. So can, is there a way to find out if I am deemed heritage or not? Yeah, through your chair, um, it's it, the property is listed. Um, uh, but it's not designated under part four of the Ontario Heritage Act. So um, the, the listing essentially is a uh, restriction on demolition. So if you uh, were intent on demolishing the building itself, which I'm sure you're not, uh, but it would you would be required to give the municipality a 60 day notice prior to demolition. Oh, okay. Um, Right, so that's that's the listing. So it, that's that's what involves being on the register. Uh, however, if the municipality were to um, um, designate the property under Part 4 of the Ontario Heritage Act, then 
and then there would be uh, municipality would have input if there were uh, any changes being made to the um, the reasons for designation. So the okay. of attributes of the of the designation. Okay, that's very clear. Thanks, Walter. Appreciate it. Okay. Does that help? That's it. Yep. Great. Okay. So we'll give a minute or two for the next application to get in. And Jason to Jason's on. Mr. Smith is in. Can you hear us? There he is. Yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Perfect. All right. So we have a minor variance application A1420 Stephen Smith 114 Leach Drive. Nancy, if you want to go through the presentation. Sure. So this is an application submitted by Stephen Smith, A14-20, 114 Leach Drive. Uh, the application is to allow for a building depth of 22 meters, whereas maximum building depth in an RD3 zone is 20 meters. So there was uh, correspondence received from the region of Niagara and they had no objections. Uh, Grimsby Power, no objections. The owner of 106 Leach Drive, uh, the rear yard abuts 114 Leach, uh, expressed concerns about the windows and potential balcony um, and privacy concerns. The owner of 112 Leach Drive, adjacent to 114, uh, is in favor of uh, the application and no objections. The owner of 19 Maryland Street uh, to the rear of 114 Leach Drive is in favor of the application and no objections. And the owners of 109 and 107 Leach Drive directly across the road are also in favor of the applications and express no objections. Uh, the first slide shows the site plan of the proposed uh, uh, building garage. Um, this uh, slide shows the south and north elevations of the proposal. And this is uh, west and east uh, elevation. And also on the east elevation, can you go back just one? Uh, you'll see the mudroom, which will connect it to the existing house. And this is the second floor plan, which shows uh, living area, bedroom, and ensuite. Um, this is 109 Leach Drive. Um, uh, these are photos that were submitted by the applicant, uh, demonstrates a recent reno renovation here, the before and after pictures. Uh, he notes that his lot is actually wider than this. And, yes, I, I'm sure. Um, so these are some additional pictures, uh, 20 Maryland uh, Street of an addition that was recently done. And uh, 107 Leach Drive, again. And this is 40 Driftwood Court. And 250 Main Street East. 212 Central Avenue. And 112 Leach Drive. Um, this is uh, a picture of the existing structure at 114 Leach Drive, and he's also demonstrating that um, he needs additional storage, and perhaps the applicant would like to expand on the uh, application. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah, I was going to say, Mr. Smith, would you like to comment on any of the uh, correspondence or other material raised so far? Sure. So, um, yeah, I did have a, also the neighbor to the, I guess it would be the direct south, uh, it would be 116 Leach. I also was, had a letter of support from them. Um, yeah, ba basically, as you guys can see, the, the house was, an, it's an 1100 square foot house and we have a couple of small kids and a growing family. So we just need more space. Um, the whole idea was to get the garage going and then, you know, the family comes. So we were uh, really hoping for the 
additional living space above it. That's really all I had, guys. Okay. And then uh, the one comment of concern was from, uh, they don't say the address that they're located from uh, Raman. Can't pronounce the last name. And they're at 106. So can is there an overview? Can we kind of see where 106 is in relation to these? Because I see you've got letters of support from uh, most of the surrounding or neighbors across the street and so on. But I'm just trying to get an idea of where um, Mr. Razazada is located. I don't know if he's um, uh, attending by Zoom at all. Did he indicate that he would be attending? Um, he's not there now. No? Okay. So I'm just curious where they are in relation. Do we have an overview of the neighborhood? Maybe a, I'm just looking on my my phone on Google Maps, but I don't know where 106 is. So, Mr. Chair, if I can jump in while we're looking for that. Um, yeah. I, I was doing my rounds, kind of knocking on doors, just kind of showing people plans. And I actually did come and uh, he, he refers to himself as Ray. So okay. I, I did talk to Ray and... Um, he seemed okay after I had shown him the plans. Uh, what he's referring, he, he had an issue with the renovation that got done on 40 Driftwood. I don't know if you can show that slide again. Um, there's the picture with the balcony that I can see um, from my backyard, but that balcony looks like directly maybe 15 feet off his fence line right into his backyard. So I think he was worried he was going to get another version of that, but he was he was happy to hear that we have no plans for any balconies and the bedroom, sorry, the window that would be looking into his corner. Um, he abuts onto my north west corner, uh, would be a, a bedroom. So it's not really, you know, no high traffic there. Okay, thank you for that clarification. I don't know if we managed to get the uh, overview up at all, Walter. Right. Oh, there we go. So which is this? So he's the large pie shape lot to the northwest. Walter. Sorry, I believe this is the property here. I'm outlining with my cursor, okay. right? This is the subject lands, right, uh, Mr. Smith? I'm sorry, I don't have, um, I don't, I'm not watching. Oh, I see. Right. Sorry. Okay, yeah. It would be the big pie-shaped lot, um, if you look yeah, at Yeah, got it, yeah. So, okay. so okay. Your, your, your corners touch? Is that correct? Our, correct. And then um, right. I expressed I expressed to him that our where my renovation will end is there's still 65 feet to my back fence. So he thought we were going to be a lot closer than that. Great, great. Thank you for that clarification. So any uh, questions then from the committee members first? Again, I'm going to have to expand the screen here for a second. Nobody? Um, there's no members of the audience here then, so I'm going to call for a motion on this application. So resolve that submission A1420. Walter, I think you have to mute for a sec. I'm getting echo. Oh, I'm sorry. Here we go. Resolve that submission A1420 for a minor variance from the provision of bylaw 1445 is amended to allow for a building depth of 22 meters, whereas 20 meters is permitted in the R3 or residential 3 RD3 zone. Um, do I have a mover and seconder on this? You can just wave your hands. Oop. Anybody? Ah, Dylan, we have a mover, seconder. Danielle? Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, oh, sorry, Herb. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I forgot to mention it on the last application, but uh, again, with that uh, provision for uh, making application for a building permit and uh, the construction starting within one year of the permit being issued. Um, again, I have concerns with putting a time limit on it. I mean, I think the other ones were um, maybe an exception, but I'm going to uh, ask Mr. Smith about that. Do you have plans to start uh, within a re uh, within a year or six months, or what's your timeline, Mr. Smith? Did you hear the question um, or comment? I, I did hear the question. Um, like our plan is uh, literally as soon as possible. If I could get in the ground before the frost come, I will. If not, it'll be first thing in the spring. 
Um, so one of the mo one of the amendments requested is to uh, have construction or sorry building permit be applied for within a year. Herb, is that? No, Mr. Chair, the uh, would be a condition that a building permit be applied for within six months of granting of the uh, application, and then construction start within one year after the building permit has been issued. So building permit, six months, construction a year, so a year and a half total outside. Yes. yes. Any objections to that, uh, Mr. Smith? I uh, know I'm that I'm totally okay with that. And Dylan, are you okay with that amendment? <clears throat> Mr. Chair, I'm okay with that amendment and I apologize being a new member on the committee, but my question is who like is who then monitors, you know, this and follows up on it and and is this sort of standard practice so we can ensure that these sort of things happen and I apologize for my naivete no, here. I just, no, I, no. I, I just, I'm just thinking of, you know, staff resources and other those kinds of things when things will expire and what happens if it's not like what, what, what happens then if it's not done or hardship falls upon the homeowner? Like I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I mean, I, I want this proposal to go through for the home homeowner given what has been laid out, but at the same time, I'm trying to think of some of the logistics and the what ifs regarding that. Uh, well, Mr. Sure. Chair, if I could make some clarification on that, uh, it would fall under the building uh, department's uh, criteria. Uh, they do monitor when building permits are issued. And if construction does not start with, uh, this is part of the building code act and the regulations, that if a construction does not start within one year, uh, the permit is null and void. And so if he does not have a building permit for this property, then he, he would not be able to have the variance. So the, the building department. Uh... So um, I'm, I'm just gonna, Walter had his hand up for, and then so did Danielle. So I'll, I'll start with Walter first. So what, what happens is, um, let's just start with the building permit. Uh, once a building permit is issued, uh, the chief building official uh, has the option of withdrawing the permit if uh, no significant work is done within six months. So that's the option that's available. It's not automatic. It's an option that's available to the chief building official. Um, with respect to with respect to uh, meeting the condition, um, it is the responsibility of the uh, of the uh, of the building department uh, because the minor variance will now become if it's approved, will become a other applicable or applicable law. So um, um, the terms and conditions of the minor variance would have to be adhered to also. So if, as an example, if a building permit application is made uh, after the six months has lapsed. So once, once a building permit application is made, uh, we're required to review the application uh, and apply all relevant zoning provisions uh, that apply, which include the variance. So the decision of the committee would be a zoning regulation, essentially. Um, and if construction isn't started within within uh, the time period prescribed by this decision, um, then that would be up to the building department to to sort of keep track of. It would be like it's it's something that's new it's not something that's typical in, in the in the process uh, so it, it it's it could potentially be something that gets overlooked in the long run uh, that's that's the, con the only concern that I would have it would be something that we would obviously have to flag on this particular file and it's because it's something extraordinary Okay, thanks for that clarification. Well, just before you do, Herb, or, or, uh, Danielle had her hand up earlier, so I'll allow her to ask her question first. Danielle? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, um, I think Walter kind of covered off what I was going to ask, but I was going to just, I guess, make the comment that would it not be, um, I guess, would we not be doubling down? Because if the Building Code Act and Ontario Building Code already covers and has these timelines in place, once a building permit has been applied for, 
Um, is there a need for us to tie conditions to a building permit being applied for within a certain constraint and construction to be started within a, within a certain constraint when it's something that staff is already required to look at under the building permit? Um, I just think it's a little bit, I, I mean, it's- Redundant, it's, you mean? Yeah, redundant, thank you, yes. It's, it's also like, it's creating a possible contravention of applicable law when we don't need to create that contravention like there's there's no need to put a condition on for a building permit when one's required anyways for construction I'm sorry herb did you want to respond first then adam uh yes mr chair there's right now there's no time limit on when a building permit needs to be applied for he can wait 10 years to uh, make an application for a building permit if you want to have a, a situation where this application sits dormant for 10 years or whatever, or two years, um, that's fine. But uh, according to the Building Code Act, when an application is made, they have to be uh, looked at within 20 days. And that's why I'm saying six months, if they apply for it in six months, and then one year after it's been approved, because there could be, it could take a year for a building permit to be approved if it meets, if it doesn't meet all the requirements. So I'm just trying to get this so that a project doesn't sit there like Main Street for years and years and years being partially finished. So we've got an, enough eyesores in the, in the town right now. Yep, that, that to me isn't that, that to me isn't a variance issue. That's a property standards or building uh, issue. That's an enforcement issue from building. That has nothing to do with approving a variance that's never built upon. I mean, once you approve a variance, technically it runs with the land in perpetuity. So they may turn around and, like Dylan said, have a hardship situation or something arises where they have to sell the property. Technically, they can sell it with approvals in place to build an addition for the next buyer, so they don't have to go through a what fifteen hundred dollar plus plus application fee to start all over just to circulate the neighbors all again? If we think this is good for the neighbor neighborhood today, I can't see why it would change over time. I don't see any variances hanging around without construction starting, you know, beyond a year, maybe two. Um, the Main Street incident, if if it's the one I'm thinking of, again, is a property standards and building um, construction enforcement issue, not the variance itself being the problem. It's the owner at the time, or current owner maybe, um, who never carried through with the project. But it doesn't mean the variance was incorrect or, done, or or isn't appropriate for that site. I think that with the right owner, it could be done properly. So again, I think it's starting a dangerous precedent of forcing people to move within a time constraint that might be unreasonable for some people. Um, if anything, I would extend it to a year um that the that the application be applied for within a year and then they have another year i guess already like danielle says without making it redundant you don't have to add that second clause about that they begin construction within a year because that's already enforceable under the building if if walters um so if i understood their your summary correct they would have the option to revoke it if they don't start within a year of applying for the building permit so if anything you know, I'm against it in, in total totality, but I mean, if if you want to give a time constraint, I would say a year would be more appropriate that they apply for it and that's it, because everything else can be done by enforcement under the building code um, process. Sorry, and I saw a few hands here. Sorry, Danielle. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. So, um, sorry, Mr. Smith, to tie you into a long-winded conversation. Um, I am willing to to second this motion. Um, however, not with Herb's um, um, condition. Um, so, I guess it it comes back to Dylan whether or not you're comfortable. I guess moving with that condition at this point in time, then, or if we're going to be looking for a new motion. Correct. So the motion on the floor right now is moved by Dylan, second by Danielle, as it was presented, as I read it. So we can vote on that first. And then if that's turned down, we can always um, um, go for an amended motion or, or, reapply, or a move and second an amended motion. So before I do call for that vote, though, Adam had his hand up. Adam? Uh, just in light of um, what's going on with COVID and everything, I would be hesitant to put any kind of deadline on anything because it seems like uh, 
we're once we're moving forward, we're moving backwards now. So I, I think timelines are kind of off the table. True. Thank you for that comment. Okay, then we have a motion moved by Dylan, seconded by Danielle, and I've read it already once. So this is without the amended time, the, the time frame, uh, timeline constraint. Um, all those in favor say aye or hold up your hand. Opposed, if any, it was carried. So it was carried. Um, Mr. Smith, if you heard that, you're still on the line? Yes, I am, thank you. Okay, and then there is a 20 day appeal period before it becomes final and binding. Right. All right. Not a problem. Um, Thank just you. Uh, one, oh. qu one quick yeah. question. Sorry. Um, do I do I need to leave the um, the variant sign up for that twenty day period? I don't believe so. No, that's okay. really the notice period for the meeting. Perfect. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you for uh, attending. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I think that's it. Right. Yes. There being no further applications, uh, I'll adjourn the meeting. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night.